Welcome back to the Amoris Patris podcast. Let us of love from the Holy Father. Join us as we discover the truth, beauty and goodness found in papal encyclical letters. So today we are here just me and myself Giovanna and Sam because our dear friend Ruth is leaving soon for the US and we are going to miss her a lot. Uh anyway, it's good to be here with you Sam. I think um after a long time we are finally back to recording and we had some good time to go through the encyclical letter exactly gg i'm so excited to see you and meet you and talk to you about this very important encyclical i may also miss ruth here today and uh, we really are looking forward for her like just to have a safe travel and have a good time over there and she's going to join us soon and before that let's enter into our encyclical gg would you like to explain what the encyclical is our listeners were waiting for us and they got a glimpse of what we were reading uh, would you like to start what the encyclical mm-hmm. is and could you explain a bit about it yes yeah, sure so we are reading the encyclical letter humanae vitae on the regulation of birth by the supreme pontiff pope paul the 6th and basically this is an encyclical letter that um addresses the concerns around birth the regulation and uh, basically artificial means of birth control Yes. What what were the conditions uh, Joanna that uh, you think that prompted uh, Pope Paul the 6th in writing the encyclical because as I was reading the encyclical I feel that like he was uh, how to say a fatherly figure addressing an issue that's happening that's burning which is very urgent. Yeah, we should give a brief uh, background on why this encyclical letter was written and in what context. So up until the 1930s there was a Christian unity on the matter of contraception. and it was you know contraception is a moral evil and should not be permitted at all but in the 1930s the anglican church had a lambeth conference where they uh, passed a resolution and permitted the limited use of contraception or contraceptive methods in situations where keeping in accord with the moral order parenthood needed to be avoided okay mm-hmm. and okay. where at the same time there was a sound reason to avoid complete abstinence So I think this um brought in a lot of noise in the society like suddenly the Christian church or the Anglican church is permitting contraception and you know what in the same conference they also passed another resolution uh which condemned the sale of contraceptives uh, just permitted it for limited use so i think that was but anyway and this caused a lot of noise in the society like i said because people look up to the church especially i think you know Christians in matters of morality and sin and i think people were getting like concerned whether if we use contraceptives are we committing a sin is it sinful so these kind of questions came about and the church even you know responded to it in the 1930s pope pius the 11th wrote an encyclical letter called casti connubi i think is that how it's pronounced yeah, yeah so yeah, that was a encyclical called casti connubi yes so it was a encyclical on um, marriage and where he affirmed that you know contraceptives cannot be allowed And then you know even the Second Vatican Council also addressed this issue but it was said that though it condemned the use of contraceptives it never gave any alternative use or alternative solution so that's when Saint John uh, the 23rd set up a pontifical commission of population family and birth rate in the 1963 uh, where he called upon different you know experts theologians philosophers doctors those working in the bioethical medical field and even bishops and cardinals they were invited for this commission and they were supposed to discuss all these matters of birth rate and birth control and give a response pope uh, paul the 6th was elected and he too continued the commission and this encyclical letter is actually in response to the the response of the commission or like what they um suggested to the pope hmm that's a lot i see that uh, you mentioned casti connubi and that's a beautiful encyclical and when you're talking about the population and stuff i think all this is a modern uh, the problem of modernism don't you agree joanna i think uh, the boom in the population and uh, resources getting emptied and all this new questions about it and maybe that was also a, a reason for like uh, for the birth control and stuff I think this was a very modern uh the problem of modernism and the church has always been trying to just uh 
navigate through these waters again yes yes definitely these are you know valid concerns i think that some people uh, would have the growth of population running out of resources they they talk about the affordability of raising children you know education is becoming expensive health is becoming expensive i think they're also starting to become this divide income inequality among the people i'm not sure but you know affordability was an issue that couples thought there was this last year that I heard from a friend who was a doctor uh, it's affordability of economic resources and the physical resources that the parents have to provide that is a burden again and they are rethinking about mm-hmm. and uh, using uh, birth control methods and stuff and i think the answer was i was saying like maybe the these children could become an asset uh, providence is such a thing from the family itself and uh, mm-hmm. i think children add to the joy of the family in and to the couple's unity and fidelity to a long term that's basic i uh, think that's a basic common sense that uh, has been like and uh, why is this a modernist problem i was thinking about it because our uh, the, the generation before us uh, had cousins and like you know brothers t- above the count of 5 uh, on an average and stuff and mm. what's happened uh, when we uh, in our generation it was limited to 2 3 and all the sterilization methods that came i think it was all a mess that happened uh with the allowance of these methods i think mm. the church is doing a commendable job i think in fi- uh, and even in this when i was uh doing research for this encyclical i saw that pope paul the sixth wrote this encyclical in a counter cultural environment where they were rejecting all the sexual restraints that were placed on them i don't know by whom but who rules the world i think by god and who is the representative on the earth the church i think they were very uh pretty angry over the voice of the church and that's why maybe the anglican church gave in i really don't know about the consequences but thank god the church the one church of christ here the catholic church is fighting with an encyclical here that human life is so sacred and mm. let it be natural and i think even in the mm-hmm. animal world it's very natural and i do when when they talk about the population control and stuff god has created a great balance in the nature of which man i think is trying to disturb i think the biggest problem with the modernity i have is the disturbance of nature especially in environmental state and right mm. now looking at this encyclical it's affecting the physiological and biological and much of human uh, morality too i was reading dietrich von hildebrand in the morning that mm-hmm. ethics have been given ethics a traditional philosophical domain has been uh, forced to follow and be under scientific thinking from then university university started breeding all this kind of Uh, modern methods into the world i was talking to a friend i was saying this universities are the breeding houses for all of these kind of things like mm-hmm. new philosophies new age things and stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what do you think jana there's a lot that you said over there and i want to address two things which um, come to my attention the first thing you said that life is sacred and sure it is it is sacred and that is why he wrote this encyclical and he starts the encyclical with this sentence The transmission of human life is a most serious role in which married people collaborate freely and responsibly with God the creator right i think god is the he's the author of life that is why man cannot act as he wants or, or even over these laws that regulate the transmission of life and that is the main concern of pope exactly. paul the 6 um another thing you said about the lowering general lowering standards of morality and ethics yep uh, exactly i think um, as we lose a sense of god as we stop to believe in a transcendental god then man becomes his own god it comes to a point where he wants control over every aspect of his own life over his body yeah. over his mind emotions his social life and then even these laws that regulate transmission of life so yeah you know all these concerns are there all these problems are there but but should we not because it's such a because life is so sacred because life is so meaningful and it's just a miracle that a life is even uh, a new life is you know happening and should we not just look at what are the moral norms um, that are enforced uh, till now right so and these are exactly exactly the moral moral laws that he um wants to address and wants the people to remember and to be reminded of because these are not laws which came up, the church just made up you know these are the, this is the natural law this is uh isn't it true jana when you mention natural law god made the nature god owns mm-hmm. the world mm-hmm. and i was thinking about the first book of genesis in the first chapters how 
uh, we have a description of go and fill all the earth and to abraham on uh, you know it was also a blessing like you know your children will be like was uh, like countless of stars and innumerable as sand and you know isn't it a blessing and uh, how the, the god of Mo- like the, the the pagan god moloch who was uh, mm-hmm. to whom was child sacrifice offered like you know was condemned and god used mm-hmm. how israel to just uh, eliminate them and stuff yeah yeah it was it was always about family the attack was on family and children yes. and yes. yeah and it was not man made isn't it even marriage yes. is not man made it is a it is a mystery and now i now understand how two people come together it's an, and what love is, is between them is a mystery isn't it jana exactly yes definitely and i'm always reminded of this quote by fulton j sheen you know uh, the child you know the child that is born it's the love of the husband and wife made flesh and you think about it like the union of man and woman in one flesh in one body that is the greatest um you know um uh, mystery and uh, it's a mystery because it it somehow portrays the love between uh, between the trinity you know that's what pope john paul the 2 talks about in theology of the body which i'm just starting to read i've just finished the first few pages and this is what he talks about and it's so beautiful like children are the supreme gift of marriage i mean sex is naturally ordered towards procreation can we stop can we stop ignoring this fact yeah uh, when you mentioned about yeah. sex is naturally uh, redirected to creation uh, i have my dogs here like you know who are like i every time they lay, they lay the puppies and stuff i i thank god every time how beautiful god's creation is how protective a mother is and how he has in his as the book of uh, as the wisdom of sirach speaks like god uh, god's wisdom is seen in all of his creation and I look at all this and you know no animal practices all this stuff and you know man is the only yeah. stupidest animal that I see uh, who is yes. going against the nature and through that against his own nature and exactly. yeah I think my one of the dogs I have here like is uh, is going to lay some puppies down in September <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> looking forward yeah. yes you said it like it's going against our very natural uh, it's against our own bodies like you know that is not how our bodies were created and Uh, our bodies do have a rhythm and a way of functioning and um artificial birth control and hormonal birth control like that is not exactly. natural that is not organic for you um and it's just sad that many people don't even know the consequences um but that is for probably later on and i just want you to address like so what was the um result of the commission and how did pope paul the 6th reply Oh thanks for asking that question Jana like I was so surprised while reading as I've told you like I had to read it thrice uh, to understand what uh, Pope Paul the 6th uh, was trying to say until unless uh, un- until like uh, came to his magisterium's reply before that mm-hmm. there was this commission as you mentioned from Pope uh, John the 23rd and it was so amazing uh, Jana when I I the title was problem and competency of magisterium and I'm like oh what happened to magisterium now and then he has to give an apologetic of why there's a magisterium and how why and how is using a magisterium because uh, the commission came up with something and there was an internal uh, incoherence in between them and there was no proper truth and you know mm-hmm. that's when you know they uh, and there were lot many people uh, thinking that just because a commission was set up and there's going to be change of the subject and it's going to be like you know uh, the church is going to be uh, how to say like uh, watering down its stance or like lowering down its stance on this matter but that's when magisterium stepped in and i remember the po- a quote from pope uh, john paul ii saint pope john paul ii in the morning i think it was again dietrich von hildebrand mentioning it it's that the magisterium uh, is through the will of christ is a security I, mean, i think a sure sign of truth okay mm-hmm. as there's this uh, thing given by christ to the uh, chair of saint P- peter like and you know mm-hmm. he uses the, this magisterium to defend the teaching that was happening down the lane uh, for the 2000 uh, years that was in line with the church tradition and also uh, th- the church tradition about uh, marriage and uh, you know uh, procreation and it, mm-hmm. it it's very uh, it's you know he had to step in he had to use the magisterium to protect the tradition and protect uh, god's mm-hmm. uh, how to say god's law uh, in the nature and yes and um you know when christ communicated his powers to the apostles and uh you know it's not just the law of the gospel but also the moral law 
that was passed down and the church is the guardian and protector of these laws and i think this is where most people and majority people get it wrong about uh, the church and um, many people don't probably understand religion and um, and that is why they have these kind of assumptions um, so on these matters right so people would say that keep your religion out of this like keep your religious views out of it but it's not a religion like how to say it like it is not true because this like contraception is wrong it's not true because just because the church says so the church itself herself teaches it because it is true exactly. and because it is supposed to just guard this law and truth exactly. it doesn't make up it it, exactly. it it doesn't make it up and um you know i don't know many people get it wrong and i just have to say it like you know yeah. can i um, add something to that jana yes Uh, so I have a problem with again the modernist uh, thinking, Joanna. So everyone is an interpreter of his own truth. That's a problem mm-hmm. again. I think mm-hmm. uh, if you see this chaos going on when uh, when each person is given the like you know the free reign to uh, you know interpret uh, something, and the problem is how are you you know they have uh, have to mention this. It's the clash of ideas and ideologies that's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. down the line but what happens when there are many ideas and many uh, reigning in the society and you know it's a clash between people there's no unity there's no cohesion truth is mm-hmm. not lost but truth is masked by this uh, sea of mm-hmm. lies but truth exists always like light in a darkness all you need to mm-hmm. see is find where's the light in the church mm-hmm. you know what was that you know the church, uh, is that lumen gentium the church is light to all nations and when you mm-hmm. mentioned in the beginning that people were looking to the church that was the approach we were we, mm. and there's this line in the book of judges that at the end i guess which made a profound impact on me when i was reading it that each man was a master of his own i guess like in each made up his own religion and then he was just roaming around and you know it's the book of judges there were authority but you know mm. they despised the authority but mm-hmm. i think i that's a thing i struggle with a lot of even in even in our homes like you know when i call the home the church as a lot of problem with obedience i guess I have to address this like mm. there's a problem with obedience and um, yeah and maybe that's why i think pope paul the 6th has to give a, a apologetic for his own majesty maybe first to the own people the, uh, there were a lot of priests uh, and uh, who were signing documents against this and stuff yes. and uh, yes. and yeah. yeah and it was so i don't know i i i can't judge them or like stuff but mm. what about the obedience what about uh, this thing i'm asking but Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, yes, yes. That's one thing, Joanna. I'm struggling. Yeah, with. I think I'll just yeah, I'll just end with saying that, you know, there is this kind of misconception that there is no such thing as objective truth, and you know, even um, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth said that there is this kind of a dictatorship of relativism, right? We're mm-hmm. kind of like, um, you know, forced to believe this kind of thing, but truth. there is only one truth because truth cannot be against itself exactly right? and no so, one makes the truth isn't it jana it's like that yeah that's the thing and i think god alone is god has truth. given us the intelligence to know these natural laws to come to know of these truths yeah. it's not that he's <laughs> left us in the sidelines you know he has given us the reasoning and intellect to understand these and which yeah. is why we are going to now understand and i want to make one one more point jana uh when we uh, as pope paul the 6th also mentions like the moral teaching on marriage a teaching mm-hmm. which is based on the natural law as eliminated and enriched by divine revelation i was deeply thinking about uh, uh re- mm-hmm. knowledge like how we derive knowledge like knowledge knowledge is uh, means like you know to to know the truth uh, there's this philosophical differences between you can know the knowledge only by reason and some say it's only by experience but when i thought deeply mm-hmm. about it uh when i what i've said mm. is knowledge can only be revealed when it happens you'll get to know about it or else like it's it's a culmination mm. of both but knowledge has to be revealed knowledge truth has to reveal itself and in person truth mm-hmm. oh, christ himself like you know he himself is the truth who mm-hmm. has revealed himself like i am the way the truth and the life and you know that's when i realized mm-hmm. all knowledge has to be revealed uh, so sam like you were mentioning uh you know knowledge is revealed to us So what is this um, I think it's important to know what knowledge has been revealed to us regarding two aspects one is married love and another one is parenthood because 
uh, if you're trying to justify artificial methods of birth control i think we need to understand what are the demands um of married love and of parenthood which i think uh, pope paul the 6 does a wonderful job in giving us a mini catechesis probably on what is married love and what do you think of this it has to be looked into all dimensions like you know whatever dimension that is possible uh, to human mind as it reveal like you know in the biological sense in the psychological sense in uh, in mm-hmm. how to say in, in societal sense and stuff mm-hmm. because man mm-hmm. is man is made in the image of god there are like his natural supernatural earthly and eternal aspects to him and uh, you know mm-hmm. this thing uh, i think this thing really warranted uh, the magisterium's understanding of this and you know i love how pope paul the sex mentions about god's loving design as you have mentioned in few words mm-hmm. he talks about how marriage is and why marriage is in in very few mm-hmm. passages i really loved it like how how the importance of marriage in the society is like you know it takes its origin and nobility and also its true nature from god as you have mentioned like uh, reading theology mm-hmm. of the body who god who is love and uh, he enters into every family and when two mm. people get come together in the ma- in the marriage and in the conjugal act and through god i think uh, mm. the act of uh, you know through their act mm. and you know there's this new life that's born and you know and the mystery of new life you know a life begins in god and and that's where mm. god participates in the marriage and what's mm. a beautiful and and he says that it's not a blind force of the nature or evolution it's the wise mm. and provident institution of god the creator mm. and he mm. made this in his loving design and why because how love perfects trinity perfects humans like you know coming together the parents the two sexes and then children the, i think you know mm-hmm. the family the husband wife and children has three uh, mm-hmm. uh, three units come together and perfect each other like you know the husband needs a wife the wife needs a husband both you know in the act get the children of who i think he ma- he mentions how children uh, uh, contribute to to the highest degree of a parents welfare and mm-hmm. you know especially i think the most important the mysterious a- 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 a part happens when god uh, enters and uh, especially to the baptized it's a sacrament and uh, it's a sacramental sign of grace of union of christ and his church and through all families of earth you know my mom always says that god is a god of families and uh, yes i i all oh, i agree 100% uh you know can i just say that the christian theology or christian understanding of marriage is just a game changer okay in the midst of this uh kind of chaotic mess that we are going around uh that we've been uh, part of um this is really so full of truth and goodness and beauty because uh like you said you know marriage is not just some chance like you know it happened by chance no no you know it's a providential institution and um you know it's the sacrament and the and the graces that come through the sacrament of marriage into uh the life of the husband and wife and then the children and i think that is why christians are able to have more children i mean not able to what do i say like they so happily accept the grace and blessing of children you know uh because the sacrament of marriage brings in a lot of grace and strength far from it being just a it's not just a physical union of two people it's much more you know it's also spiritual and it's it's also divine and yes yeah, there's so much to say into that like what do you think you know come comparing to our present culture and what they believe about uh same married love wow uh, that's a really important question gigi i was thinking about while you were talking about this and while i mentioned about the three units of you know well, husband wife and children and uh, and also i loved how you said uh, how sacramental grace gives strength for paul the sixth initially was talking about you know take uh, there was a question that it takes heroic efforts to have fidelity in marriage and i was mm. I, i just want to say this two things uh, as you have mentioned let's divide it into two things as pope paul the sixth have talked about married mm. love you know mm. two two persons coming together uh, mm-hmm. and uh, vowing each other faithfulness till death and mm. second thing the marriage and the conjugal act of the fruit of, of marriage being children and uh, mm-hmm. that's where it, it it goes into the realm of responsible parenthood i would like to talk mm-hmm. about married love uh, jana and that's a v- mm-hmm. very wonderful question you have asked me you know mm-hmm. what while i was a protestant the one thing that made me again a catholic was 
you know the seven sacraments and out of which the marriage you know because uh, i've seen marriages fall i've seen uh, people leave and i've seen people you know abuse marriages and you know i've, pe- I've seen people you know not being you know faithful enough or like how to say and that it troubled me fine uh, it's sin in human heart but what about your theology what about what about your morals what about your ethics and if you are not you know the, if the standard is not set and if you, and then what are you asking people to follow i was asking mm-hmm. about the current culture and i was thinking like when i looked at the church it was always trying to uphold the dignity of marriage the uh, sacredness the sanctity and sacramentality of marriage and that's when i was like i had to thank god again why have you given us the church who is still like you know thank you so much thank you for being like you know the guardian of truth again thank you for keeping sane in this world which is full of chaos uh, what i loved about um, you know how he describes married love is uh, is that you know love is not a feeling you know this is not just about emotions because if that was one day you're going to feel in feel that you love this person and next day you you're going to feel that you don't love this person and that's why we have this kind of um, fallouts in relationships and um, but love he says you know it's an act of free will you know whose trust is such that it is not meant only to survive the joys and sorrows of daily life but also to grow so that the husband and wife become in a way one heart and one soul and together attain their human fulfillment so you know love willing the good of the other you know i don't love the person because of what he how he makes me feel or what i receive from the relationship you know um but it's for the person's own sake right um and i think this is again a very contrast to uh the culture and what the culture understands of love and marriage um and all marriages and all all love come with sacrifices you know uh so maybe if um you know a couple wants to have more children of course there have to be sacrifices part of it you know um anyway and the last point which he talks about is that um you know that this love is fecund it means that you know it is not just confined to just the husband and wife and just this loving interchange between the husband and wife but it also you know it's it's it brings new life into being so and this is where we come to the part of responsible parenthood and i find it very interesting how he describes uh, responsible parenthood in many different aspects so which one was your which one caught your eye Gigi does one line that caught my eye you know I want to read it out in the context of physical economic psychological and social conditions responsible parenthood is exercised mm-hmm. by those who prudently and generously decide to have more children and by those who for serious reasons and with due respect to moral precepts decide not to have additional children for either a certain or an indefinite period of time okay mm-hmm. uh, this was one line which which opened my mind to uh, the understanding of uh, pope paul the 6th it was uh, actually mind blowing to me what caught your eye jana yeah yes for me it was um, how he res- how he describes responsible parenthood in regards to the biological processes you know so here he is saying that you know responsible parenthood does not begin when you become a parent or when a child is come into the world no he says responsible parenthood starts even before that it means that you are fully aware of the biological processes right the proper functions of your procreative you know the faculty the procreative um you know functions of the human body and uh, and then he comes to the second point and then in regards to your you know drives and emotions responsible parenthood means that a man's reason and will must exert control over them so uh, i yeah. think you know just thinking about the virtue of chastity you know i think that can solve a lot many problems in our world um and uh, you know self control and purity and chastity because um you know sex is what we have in common with animals but love is what we have in common with god 
you know we are not we are we are not of animal instinct uh, that we act upon these desires and emotions as in when we want we should yes. not we are given an intellect and a reason which should exert control over these emotions surely these emotions are there and you will see in theology of the body he talks about how these uh, desires are good but uh, you know there has to be a proper ordering of them and um, even in regards to the biological processes you need to understand how your body works it means that if you're going to engage in sex it is likely that you will bring a child into this world okay that's just how the nature is that's how our bodies are made and these are the two that's how things god, that's how god's design is exactly that's how it was designed you cannot deny this kind of reality and if you do i mean you i don't know that's why that is exactly why we see this kind of chaos in the world um yeah so these two are really strong points i think like responsible parenthood starts even before you become a parent you know right now you need to understand um, your biological processes and you know how it works so <laughs> i think that was yeah. quite interesting that was amazing gigi from you and uh, uh, you touched the natural uh, god's natural design in this and uh, the natural yes. law and also yes. how the uh, the uni- the unitive act is also a procreative mm. act every yes. time yes and god yes. in his design has given this natural rhythm and yes. you know why are people scared about population and stuff yeah because there has been a lot of stuff uh, like you know bugs mm-hmm. fears and stuff on this mm-hmm. thing but look at nature like you know god 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 is like you know in his providential design has been you know uh you know ruling the world and you know mm. he's just taking care of it and you know mm. but the thing is you know whenever like what's what's wrong with man that's the question why are you like mm. you know what's mm. what's what's wrong with the church is like you know the the world the modern world when it looks at the church it says like what's wrong with the church while we're doing this the church is mm. the mother and you know it has to care for its children and you know everyone mm-hmm. made in the image of god it has a responsibility just to lead him to the truth and you know lead him to the person of truth and you know administer him uh, you know through grace and like you know let make him you know the church is a you know mm-hmm. it's it's the mother it it has to care and you know a mother always provides and you know this you know you you also see gg how uh, john you, you also see how the voice of the church is one in unison like you know when we read the, the previous encyclical god is love you made a point that eros has to be naturally disciplined and you know you talked about chastity and in the morning uh, hildebrand made a really comment what about those people uh, there was a uh, there was a disgust saying that abstinence and these things are not uh, you know they 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 just trouble marriage and he says what about those people who leave uh, you know uh, for work for professional reasons uh, out of country or stuff they do they also practice abstinence and stuff for certain uh, periods of time and also if what what if you what and he makes a really bold claim what if i pay for those people uh, for abstinence will they take it up yeah and you know the thing is you know people are so uh, given in to their natural uh, uh, you know desires and stuff and you know i and the root cause of all things is like you know man trying to be god the mystic of devil mhm and there's one more thing that he mentions uh you know towards the end of responsible parenthood is that you know parents need to recognize their own duties towards god themselves their families and human society which means that you know they are not free to act as they choose in the service of transmitting life because like we said like god is the author of life and um and on the contrary they they are bound to ensure that what they do corresponds to the will of god the creator of course a very uh, i think a husband and wife really have to be quite humble and really surrender and open to the will of god yes yeah uh, would you like to tell more about the natural rhythm that god has designed in, uh, in his uh, yes. wisdom yes and it was so interesting and exciting for me to learn that um, you know birth is naturally spaced you know uh, that fertility is not uh you know fertility is not the result of each and every act of conjugal union or or sex you know and that is the truth and i was studying about this and i got to know that see a woman is already born with all the eggs right we don't produce more eggs in a lifetime 
and that's why we are relatively more infertile than man um and um, you know every month a woman will release only one egg right only one egg which will stay in the body only for 24 hours and fertilize only for 12 hours which means that we only have a 12 hour window to conceive i mean that makes me think of two things like one is that it is incredible and it's a miracle that you and i are here okay like what are the chances that 12 within those 12 hours in a month you know um, that that we are conceived and second thing makes me uh you know reflect upon is that we don't need these artificial methods we don't need it we just if we and you know science has advanced so much uh there's much more information now on how women can uh, know their natural cycles and there are period and you're not going to be fertile the whole month you are fertile only for a certain period of time um and if you know that you know you just need to abstain during those times if you are trying to not have children is that is and that's another you know thing that pope paul the sick talks about that but that comes on later but uh, i think it was so interesting just to know this uh, scientific fact yeah what do you think wow john when when you first told me about this it was so surprising and then i I again had to thank God for his, you know, lovely wisdom in nature and, you know, in all of us. Mm. Thank you so much Mm -hmm. to God. And, Jana, thank you so much for explaining this. I think it's a perfect end to this episode and also a perfect start to the next episode that's going to come around soon. uh, Mm -hmm. Where we talk about the birth control methods, the lawfulness and lawfulness of it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a very, uh, very beautiful, interesting, again, a discussion that's going to be there like today yes and yes. you know it was a really beautiful discussion and I, I really every time i really love talking and uh, about 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 these uh, topics and everything with you joanna and i miss uh, i think we both miss ruth a lot here and yes definitely miss you a lot ruth yeah but it's yes. a lovely conversation what do you say joanna always a pleasure to talk to you sam about everything under the sun and especially this kind of uh, you know intellectual uh, and uh, quite uh, edifying conversations i would say yeah okay thank you and i have to thank um, jana let's thank all our listeners uh, from all of three of us ruth jana and sam and uh, we because of you and your support and your listening that we are able to just uh, you know put out this content out for you guys and do check it out do be blessed do send us some questions and comments and do share with your friends and family do think about these issues because they concern a lot of you know the daily activities of our life and god Mm -hmm. bless you all remember god loves you and thank you so much 